Hello, my name is Kainson, and today we are going to do introduction to hash table for about nine minutes. Level is beginner, and you should have a, a, a knowledge of array. All right, so a hash table behaves about the same way like an array. What it means is that you need to store data in a key value pair. So you have indexes holding the positions that you can store data. So let's take, for instance, you have a table like this, and you want to store data in it. So we have, let's assume that we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. OK? So in hash table, you need to store a key and a value pair. So we have key and we have a value. Okay, so the key is the data you want to store. Let's say my name. And then the value, let's say the phone number. Okay, so what hash table does is you need to use something called a hash function that accepts this key and gives you a value to a value of position where to store this data. So to, to make it clearer, we have to need we need a hash uh, a hash function. A hash function h right so a hash function h takes my name right and provides a location in the hash table where to store this data so let's say this hash function takes my name and provides a value of two so the hash hash function takes the key and provide the value which represents the location in the table where to store this. So here we have, let's say my name, this is K. So it means that I'm going to store my name K in position two. So I'm storing K there. So let's assume I take another, another person's name, let's say Saf, That is a name. And after passing through this hash function h is going to give us, let's say, four. Right? It means that Safi have to be stored in position in, in position four. So this is S. So I'm going to now place Safi here. Alright, let's try another one. Let's say we have some other person's name who want to add, let's say, uh, Jackie. Okay, so at this point, after passing through the hash function, it gives us a location or position of one. It means that we need to store Jackie in position one. So let's put it in there. So we can continue like this and take note that if you pass the, the same name several times into the hash function, it's going to always produce the same hash value. All right, let's try a different person now. Let's say OT. And it hashes to location five. It means I'm going to store it in five ot goes to five maybe we are going to just try the last one let's say let's try another person betty it speeds out let's say three and it means we are going to put it here all right but the problem would arise when 
different keys may hash to the same uh, value. So let's assume that we hash uh, somebody else. Let's say, um, uh, let's say, uh, let's say Harry. If we hash Harry and then it gives us four. It means that we are going to try to put Harry in location 4 and that becomes a problem, right? So two uh, values uh, are, are being hashed in the same, two, well, two keys are hashed the same value of 4. That means a uh, problem. We can't uh, place two items uh, in the same place. That would not work. And this is called collision. Collision. So when collision occurs, it becomes a problem. So the problem of hash, hashing is always to solve a collision problem. There are different ways to solve it, but in, the, in this way, I'm going to tell you about a method called chaining. So this is a method to solve the problem of collision. So chaining simply says all the keys that provide the same hash value should be placed in a separate linked list. And then the very first point here will hold a pointer to the linked list. So it means that we have a linked list here that holds all the all the values that have the same key. All right, so what it means is that here, instead of putting X and H in the same place, put them in a separate linked list, right? So remove them and then have a pointer to this linked list, all right? So chaining simply says, use a linked list to hold all the values all the keys that have the same hash value. So let's say we want to use, want to do a different person. So let's say we have H. We are hashing a different a different value now. Uh, let's say Feli, and it hashes to also four. And then what we simply do is to simply add one more item to the linked list, and then we put F. We put that key in there. So this is called chaining. The same way, let's just try one more. Let's say we have, uh, we have, let's try to do Zena. Okay, and it hashes to, to two, right? So Zena hashes to two. So it comes here and it, there's a collision that occurs. So simply move K out of that place into a linked list and then also place the new value into the linked list. So you can always continue to expand the list to hold more items that provide the same hash value. So this is simply called chaining. In another method of solving collision, this is called linear probing, is in that case, if you hash a key, let's say we hash, um, let's say, meals, and it produces one, and if we want to place it in one, it's occupied, and then what it will do is it simply moves to the left to look for any other empty space, and it places it there right so it looks for empty space to the left and places it right there if it doesn't find, find an empty space it moves to the next place and this is called linear probing so linear probing and chaining they are two methods of solving collision problems linear probing so in subsequent tutorials i'm going to explain this uh, more clearly but basically, this is how hash tables work, and these are the two methods of handling collision in a hash table. I'd like to thank you for viewing. Remember to subscribe for more videos. Also, like this video if it's been informative for you.